Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm on the street, and today I talk about Linux so much on this channel I almost can't believe that I haven't talked about this before. If you're going to install Linux on your computer, you need to download an ISO image, and then you either put it on a CD or DVD, and increasingly it's required that you have a DVD because CDs are just too small for all the information that Linux distributions contain. Or if you don't have a DVD or a CD, you can use a USB flash drive instead. Now, as you can probably tell, I used to use CDs and DVDs every time, but that gets very expensive, and you have to waste a CD or a DVD every single time you want to change your distribution or update your distribution. So instead of doing that, like I said, you can use just an ordinary USB flash drive, and I think I've got one. Um, here it is. You can tell I'm prepared for these videos. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to use a small utility program called Unet Boot In. Not sure how that name is pronounced, but it's a weird name, you have to admit. So yeah, I am showing you how to use that small utility program to write Linux to a USB flash drive. Alright everyone, here we are on the desktop. And this is the UNet boot in homepage. Like I said, not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but you know, not sure how you would judge a word like that. UNet boot in is available for all platforms, Windows, Mac OS, of course, and Linux. And it is based around Linux, so it makes sense that it is available on Linux. For a lot of distributions, such as Ubuntu and like Fedora, UNet boot in is actually included in your distribution's default repositories. However, if it's not, such is the case with SUSE or OpenSUSE, uh, you can click on the packages thing there and it will bring you to a page where you can download UNet boot in. And in this case, it's software.opensuse.org and, you know, you can easily get a one-click install there. So yeah, UNet boot in is available for all operating systems or all major operating systems. And like I said, it is based around Linux. So I've actually got it installed already. So let's minimize Firefox for a little bit. And let's go into UNet boot in. And there we go. It will ask you for your root password, apparently. And I use this program a lot, and it could not be simpler. As you can see, we've got two options here, distribution or disk image. Now, this is really, really convenient. The first option called distribution, you can actually select from a list of distributions that are, that are common or popular, and you can select to automatically download a certain distribution and certain version of that distribution and put it on your flash drive. So I can say, like, I want uh, Kubuntu version 14.04. And I can choose if I want the live version or if I want the hard drive installed or the net install or if I want the live 64-bit version, which I actually would. And like I said, this will automatically download uh, Kubuntu version 14.04 64-bit live version and put it on your flash drive. Of course, there are many distributions that are not on this program, and sometimes the program's a little out of date, I've found, which is fine because you can also come down here to this option, Disk Image, and you can specify an ISO file, or actually even a floppy file, a .img file, if you've got one of those. According to the project's website, this is intended for Linux distributions only, but you can try it with any ISO file. You can come down here and select ISO file and I'm going to go to my... Oh! Now the reason my home files are not showing up right now is because we started this program in root user mode. So all you have to do is go into your file system and slash home and Jacob and downloads and let's specify we only want to see ISO files. So these are all the ISO files in my downloads folder right now and for an installation that's only a few months old, that's quite a lot, isn't it? We are going to choose Linux Mint 17 XFCE Edition. This is the 64-bit version, and note, it was marked by the Linux Mint project. This is the DVD version, so it was not made specifically for a USB drive. This was just an ordinary DVD uh, ISO file, and we're going to, yeah, select that. Um, if you want to use this as a, a portable install kind of drive, then you can use this option that says space used to preserve files across reboots. That will let you install an Ubuntu distribution on your flash drive and you'll be able to save files to the flash drive. Um, not exactly sure. I've never used that before. I would just stay away from it if you're just using this to install a distribution on another computer. But we are going to use USB drive. You can also do hard disk. 
Um, not sure why you'd want to do that because th this is not installing the distribution once again. This is only flashing the ISO file onto it. So we're going to choose a USB drive. If there's more than one USB drive in your computer, then it will show up more than one. I would unplug anything that's not what you're trying to install this to just to be safe. I mean, if you want to, you can go ahead and open up like Gparted or something, which I don't even have installed. Open up a partition editor and make sure that you're writing to the correct partition. But I've only got one flash drive plugged in right now. That's got to be it. And once again, I recommend you take all your files off of the partition. I found that putting extra files on won't actually hurt your, your Linux setup. But, you know, just for simplicity's sake, clear off your flash drive. And then we're going to go ahead and click OK. So this is not destructive. This will not uh, delete files that it doesn't need to. But this will pretty much just extract the ISO file onto the flash drive. And it will also set up a bootloader for you. So again, if I wanted to, instead of using the Linux Mint file that I had downloaded, I could go and select Linux Mint in this drop down menu. And I could choose. See, the problem is it only goes up to version 16. And I want version 17. So no problem. It just selects the disk image and bring your ISO file in there. And we'll click OK. And this doesn't take too long. It might take a little bit, depending on the, the size of the ISO file that you downloaded. But as you can see right now, it is it skipped to downloading files because we were using our own ISO file. Now it's extracting and copying files from the ISO file, from the ISO archive, into the USB flash drive. Next, it will install the bootloader. And that was very quick. And next, we've got installation complete. And you are prompted to reboot your computer into the flash drive. Now, I'm not going to do that quite yet because I have to stop the recording software, obviously. But that is all you have to do. I'm just going to click Exit, and bam, my USB flash drive has Linux Mint 17 XFCE edition on it, 64-bit uh, version. And yeah, now I will go ahead and uh, I'll stop the recording software, and then I'll restart the computer just to make sure it worked. All right, so we'll go ahead and shut down. Now we'll start up the computer. And I'm going to push the key that gives me all my options to boot into. This might be different on, on your computer. On mine, it's F10. It might be like Escape or, or F2 or F12 or something on your computer. So here we are at my BIOS's boot screen. And this is where I can select what I want to boot off of. Like I said, the step to get here might be different depending on what computer or what motherboard you have. Um, but yeah, once you're here, you can go down and select whatever a USB flash drive is called. I know some people say that their flash drives actually report as hard drives, so that might be a little confusing, but like I said, that differs from computer to computer. The point is, let's boot into our flash drive, and now we've got the UNET boot in boot menu, and that will let us do some basic things like memory check, um, or we can boot from the local drive, or the default would probably be start Linux Mint. So we will enter... And once we do that, it should bring us to, oh, it's not bringing us to the Linux Mint boot menu. That's interesting. So Linux Mint actually does have its own boot menu, but the UNet boot in boot menu kind of overrided that. And here we are, booted straight into the Linux Mint. And I'm not going to install it, obviously, because I've got a perfectly happy working uh, OpenSUSE installation and all my stuff is kind of on there and it's not backed up. But what the heck is this? Oh, that's a screensaver. But yeah, as you can see, it worked, and we are now booted into Linux Mint off of the flash drive. And if we wanted to install right now, we could install Linux Mint onto our computer once again off of the flash drive. And the best part about using a flash drive, or maybe the best part about using a flash drive, rather than CDs and DVDs, is that you can actually just reuse the same flash drive every time you want to change distributions, every time you want to update your distribution. Uh, all you have to do, I would go into the flash drive in a file browser, and I would just delete all the files that show up on the flash drive, just so that nothing is conflicting between the old and new installation. Um, but yeah, just go in and delete everything on the flash drive, and you can repeat this process as many times as you want, for as many different distributions and distribution versions as you want. So yeah, I hope this was helpful to you. If you want to know more about Linux or about distributions, or if you have any technology questions at all, I would be pleased to answer them. Join our forums at nerdinthestreet.com and drop us a line. I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm in the street, and I will see you guys later. See ya.